At this point in time, what I'm going to do is go ahead and look at our data stream. Um, I want to go ahead and start recording data stream. When I press the record button, it will start our record. As it's recording, we'll go ahead and put that into the point where it's going to pick it up for us. Now it's recording the data. We'll continue to look at the data stream on PC scan so we can go ahead and manipulate that. You'll notice that the data stream is now recording. We can record as much data stream as possible, as much data stream as you'd like. However, I would recommend never to record beyond nine minutes. That's about the maximum amount of time that you'd like to do. At this point in time, at any time I want to, I can then hit the stop button. When I hit the stop button, we're now ready to look at our data stream again to play it back. I don't have to go out to any other menu. My playback menu is on the main tab. I don't ever have to hit exit to come back to where I am. When I hit playback, there's my um, uh, vehicle that I just recorded. You'll notice that May is when I did one a long time ago, so let's go way towards the bottom. And the latest one is uh, November 9th today at approximately 1,900 hours. I'm going to go ahead and click that. We'll let it play back. And now you'll notice the data stream is automatically playing back for us. We're going to let it populate for a while because it's going to play back as much as I want. This is automatic. At any one point in time, I can go to the pause button. I can click on pause. When I do, I can go next frame, next frame, one frame at a time. And I can move a frame back again. So I can move that anywhere I want to. All right. We're we're still looking at PC scan. Let's go ahead and look at the PowerPoint for a few moments. We're looking at data stream there, so you can see what we've done. Now we've got mass airflow highlighted on PowerPoint. And if you go ahead and click one more time, it'll ask you to line graph it. When I line graph it, it comes at that point with the line graph. I'm going to go ahead and physically, at this point, have him advance to the next screen. He's going to freeze the data so that we can now physically go ahead and scroll and look at it. As he goes to the next PowerPoint, it'll physically allow you to go ahead and move it over. So next PowerPoint slide, please. Now I'm going to physically touch the red vertical dashed line and slide it to the left. When I slide it to the left, to whatever direct position I have, I can go ahead and do it. So at this point, we're letting our Dodge give us our fault code. I'm going to hit the menu button on PC Scan so we can look at what's there. I'm going to go back to Diagnostic Functions. You'll notice that I have special tests with PC Scan as well. That's the unique part about this laptop version. The laptop version does give me PC scan at that point. I can physically go ahead and now um, um, go to uh, uh, injector tests, and I'll have all my available injectors, in this case six. And I'm going to go back to groups real quick because I forgot to point something out. But if you look at your injector tests, in parentheses is the number six. The number six indicates that I've got six tests available to us. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to injector tests. I'll go to injector number three. Now I can go ahead and start my test. To do that, I'll go ahead and touch on the Enable key, and we'll start our test. You notice my data stream is there. At any one time, I can go ahead and highlight any data stream item I want. So I'm going to go ahead and physically hi highlight um, something I would like, and then I can either graph it or make it an LED according to what I'm dealing with. All right. So now we're back at our diagnostic trouble codes. We'll go ahead and populate the diagnostic trouble codes. Now we're going to go ahead and select a fault code that's there. When I tap on a fault code that I want to look at, for example, I want to look at a mass air sensor fault code. I'm looking at P0101 mass airflow sensor. At this point in time, I want to get some repair information off our database from the hotline. I'm going to physically go ahead and go to direct hit, which will drive us right to the Internet because I am now hooked to the cable on the Internet. At this point, it's going to go ahead and physically set us up where we're ready to go get Identifix database. You know, so I only push the direct hit button. I am using this exact vehicle. Up will come in a moment. Uh, all the database that's available to you, for example, there's OBD2 code data. I'm going to see what it has for that physical fault code P0101 mass airflow sensor range. It will physically touch on it, and there is all of my actual um, uh, code fix information for me to follow to try to resolve the problem. And that's just one of the many things that are available on Direct Hit. Let's go look at some other stuff. At this point, I'm going to physically go ahead and pull back a little bit with the camera. We'll go touch on System. And then it's going to pull up all the systems that are available to this vehicle. As you notice, if I strike up, you can see what's there, everything. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on emissions controls. When I do, I'll use this exact same vehicle. And now you notice I've got everything from repair track to hotline archives to um, 
posted fixes, and I got all my recalls, my TSBs. I got wiring diagrams and component locations. So right now, first things first, let's go look at a wiring diagram. When I tap on wiring diagram, I'm going to tap on then engine. Up will come all the available wiring diagrams for this vehicle. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and tap on wiring diagram number four. Excuse me, uh, number four. When I do, up will come my wiring diagram that will show us our mass airflow sensor. And there's my mass airflow sensor. If we could pull out a little bit, you notice you're looking at a full-size wiring diagram. This is an OEM wiring diagram. Here's what's wild. I'm only looking at a portion of it. And if you notice right now, I can move it anywhere I want to by simply taking my finger and clicking and dragging anywhere I'd like on that wiring diagram. Or if I really would like to and I want to see the whole thing, I can physically go ahead and hit the negative button and make it smaller. Or I can make it larger by hitting the positive button. What's really unique is now if I wanted to, I could hit the print button. If I had a printer hooked up, up will come a list of all available printers. I no longer have to physically go ahead and just have one particular printer. I could then find whatever printer I may be using. I would hit the print button, and away I would go. And I would physically take my speed scroll to go ahead and scroll through my printers. All right? I'm going to cancel because I don't have a printer hooked up, but that's what's there for you. At this point, let's go ahead and look at the lab scope. So I'm going to quickly go back out. I'm going to tap on the menu button. And I'm going to go right directly to Diagnostic Functions. All right, I'm going to tap on Scope. And you'll notice that my scope is now set up a little bit different. We have three ways to go with our scope. I've got an ignition scope. I've got a lab scope. I've got a digital multimeter. I've got component tests and system tests. I'm going to go right to component tests. When I do, it comes up a list of all my available um, um, sensors. I'm going to tap on Mass Airflow Sensor. And when you do, up comes two types of tests, scan tests or voltage tests. I'm going to tap on voltage tests. There's my lab scope set up for the correct amount of uh, voltage and the correct amount of time horizontally. And in the bottom is a set of directions on how to physically go ahead and hook up the scope. Now that I know how to hook it up, I need a wiring diagram. I'm going to go ahead and tap on info. Then I'll tap on diagram. And up will come my wiring diagram in about one second. You'll notice that now I'm looking at my lab scope. And I'm looking at my wiring diagram. So we're going to go ahead and pull in a little bit so you can see the wiring diagram. At this point, I want to go ahead and physically increase the size of the wiring diagram. I'll push on the button marked full. Now I get an increased wiring diagram. And then I'm going to go ahead and physically push on the button hide, and now I've got an enlarged version of the lab scope, full screen. <coughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. What's really unique is I can go from lab scope to data stream, data stream to diagnostic trouble codes by simply tabbing back and forth. I'm going to tap on the menu button. I'm going to physically go right back to my um, data stream. I'll go to engine data one. And in a moment comes up my data stream, fully graphed. All right? I've preset this car up. However, now if I want to, I can strike up. I can go ahead and find any item I want. For example, throttle position sensor. I can line graph that, and away I go. If I want to, I can select that once again on my Pegasus, and I can physically now go ahead and say show select, and I'll be looking at my one line item. Like I said earlier, if you notice where the vertical dash line touches the graph to the far right, you notice where that little red dot touches is where this digital never comes from. The little red dot on the vertical dash line, where it touches the graph is where the digital number at the bottom comes from. That's what's happening now. That's the incoming data. The one at the very bottom, once again, is my minimum. The one at the very top is the maximum that was ever seen. And then the average, the one in the middle, is the average of all the numbers there. But now, let's say I see a glitch over to the far left. I'm going to physically go ahead and quickly freeze it by touching the freeze button. I'll take my physical red dot, and I'll drag it slightly to come to where I want to look at it, and there I am. There's my glitch. Or I can now hit resume, and I can take my red dot and move it over ahead of the graph and let it catch up later. A couple things that I can do. In a moment, we're going to go look at special tests so you can see the bi-direct applications that are available on the tool as well with the Pegasus.